Hey, what's up everyone? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, we're going to give an update of the tank. We're going to focus on the corals that have been improving over the months uh, since the last one and also give you a rundown of how the uh, livestock is doing, also the corals that may not be doing so hot, and also give you an update on the filtration side of the tank, um, what's been going on with it, what may have been added to the system. So, um, with that said, let's get to it. Okay, so this week we're starting in the right hand corner with the fungia plate. The fungia plate has been um, decreasing in size now. I think the reason for that is um, a flow issue and it's something that I need to work on to get it back to where it was a few weeks ago. Feeling no ill effect at all is the uh, trachea. It's bigger than ever and uh, basically um, doing really really well in this corner so that's gonna stay right where it is the purple and gold um, candy canes are doing really good since they've been moved they're acclimated to their new spot and they're bouncing back what you do notice is uh, at least I do with some of my corals when you change their location they will show that they're not happy with it, but give them a couple of days and they tend to have, um, you know, they tend to bounce back and uh, get used to where they are. If they do that uh, for more than a couple of days as far as not showing that they like it there, then of course think about moving them. The neon green favia is doing well and growing larger. I mean, it's starting to spread down now and uh, heading towards the rock, which is I really wanted it to do. The button scoli is getting bigger, so uh, from a growth standpoint, it's almost doubled in size over the last, uh, say, two, three weeks. Moving up on the tower, the Hollywood Stunted Chalice uh, never lets me down. I mean, you can see here how it's cupping up, spreading to the tower even more and encrusting on it um, more than ever. Now up on the return again where the purple digi is, you can see it's getting a lot more purple now. Um, there are some mixed um, corals in here. Here's a piece of red digi. Um, the other piece of red digi right here is really encrusted up on the tower. Uh, as you can see right here um, in the center of the frame, that's the part that's encrusted up and is stretching up onto the tower and there is even it's kind of hard to see from this angle I can't really get it with the camera but that light red orangey piece of coral in the middle of the digi is actually a piece of the red setosa that I just glued up there for this for the sake of it and just see if it would grow but it is starting to pile up and growing out a lot of my SPS lately has been taking off in the tank um, you can see here the Montipora cap is growing really well and is now encrusting onto that bottom rock and the Jason Fox Barney Coral is is taking off with some very very long um, sticks that are coming up out of the bottom so a lot of the SPS is taking off now also another one that's taking off is the, Monte, the encrusting Montipora the green one that I have here it's starting to stretch more and more on this side and also on the bottom as you can see that little peak uh, sticking out from the rock so um, it's going to be interesting to see how that grows out as well as that little piece that remained behind uh, right here is actually starting to grow more and uh, is a lot greener <laughs> than its parent but uh, we'll see what the, what happens with that over here, this maze brain, I put it up here to get it off the uh, sand. It seems to like where it is now um, and is encrusted almost off the plug, as you can see right there. Um, the Leptastria coral 
is really doing well and there is a shot right here of the sweeper tentacles that it's putting out. Um, it does this around the clock now and looking for food. The uh, Welzo Symphilia Welsoni um, that never disappoints it with, it with the color show that that puts on. As you can see right here, the pink egg cans are really doing uh, magnificently. They, they were just like two or three uh, little babies and now they're starting to get bigger in the tank and putting out these wonderful colors as you can see here. This green egg can is now starting to show more coloration as well and, and filled out over the entire rock that I have it on and is now on the sand. This is really a close-up I'm giving you of the uh, A-Can Garden, which I hadn't really done before, but you can see the, the coloration of these A-Cans is unreal. Uh, here is another one that was a little micro dot of A-Cans and uh, now it's spreading out really well. Uh, the orange and the greens in the back, as well as the my first group of A-Cans that I put in this tank are really doing well also. The orange and teal ones in the back are doing just as good as ever. And a lot of these corals, are, I, I really contribute the Acan Gardens growth to the reefroids that I add in the tank. Here's another group right here, and they are right below a softball size neon green candy cane. At this point, it's really doing uh, fabulous in the tank and, and I'm loving having that coral in my tank. Heading on to the Euphelia section of the tank, this green frog spawn is plumped up fatter than ever. The What I'm noticing now as you see the green torch and um, of course my original frog spawn right here, uh, what I'm noticing is the conditions in the tank may be really really clean because I'm getting a lot of growth out of my SPS and the Euphelia is showing a little bit temperamental side to it. Uh, as you can see by that one right there, the pink one was almost um, gone, but I did bring it back. But the purple torch in the, in the back has lost all the zooxanthellae, but still maintains, at, as far as right now, that it's, it's still alive in my tank. Um, it's kind of confusing why this one would lose all of those in Delian color while all the rest of the Euphelia in the tank are doing pretty good. The red jawbreaker mushrooms are doing well. Uh, the one that I had up there that was floating around the tank has taken root and stuck to that rock and uh, now all three are growing there. They're about the size of quarters and uh, the middle one is about the size of a half dollar. Getting into the fish in the tank uh, the powder blue tang, um, he is a pain in the butt because I had to move a few fish because of him. But hopefully uh, in the near future when I do step up the size of the tank, uh, he'll have a little bit more room to grow and therefore uh, I'll be able to put some new livestock in here. Probably I will have to quarantine him first and make him the last one that's put into the bigger tank. Uh, the clowns stay over here. They have been venturing out more towards the middle of the tank a lot lately, but most of their day is spent uh, behind the frog spawn, just making areas to lay eggs and whatnot. Now, the yellow tang you saw a little while ago, um, it's in the back right now. It's doing real, real well. There is no aggression between these two tangs. Um, they get along fine and um, basically they're the only two tanks I can have in my tank at this point. But this tank has been with me uh, for a long time. It's the oldest fish that I have in the tank right now. Uh, in that that fish right there is five years old as far as I've had it. So it's probably a little over five years old since I got it. The two cleaner shrimp that I have spend most of the day here and at nighttime they will come out on the rocks and do what they need to do as far as uh, staking out some territory to set up their cleaning stations. I do have four cardinal fish in the tank. Uh, they spend their time behind the rocks and really um, I don't see them that much in the tank 
but when the food comes out, they will come out. Now I did promise a update on the sump, the one I got from Billy Pipes. As you can see, um, I do show everything. I don't clean anything up before I show this, just because I want, I want you to see exactly how it looks, um, basically as, it's, as it would running in your house. Um, the SCA 302, still going strong, still pulling out a lot of skim mate, and um, working like a champ. The middle refugium, as you can see, the, the drop light that I have is lo very low to the surface of the water. I may have to do something about this because what I do is it tends to generate growth of this like yellowish green algae that you would usually see in a algae scrubber. But what I'll do is I'll just skim that off and, and throw that in the garbage. You can see some um, purple algae in there that's pretty much like a cyano. There's the grape calerpa. There is chato still in here. You'll also notice some different shades of green and red um, algae on the glass. The red's probably cyano as well. The reason I really don't mind it down here, of course, is that it stays in my sump and doesn't has not made it up into my main display, thank goodness. Primarily because of the way the sump is set up. It was a really great design by Billy Pipes and works really well. The return stage is just a return pump and also the canister you see in the corner with the powder blue top is a, a small little canister of, uh, char of carbon that I'm using just to clean up the water a little bit. It's the only other thing I have running on the tank. It primarily runs from the uh, return stage and will deposit the water back right almost on top of the return pump. So that's it for this week. And as always, um, if you are a new person to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get updates on uh, when the next video comes out. If you're a returning subscriber, feel free to uh, throw a comment down below, hit the thumbs up, and um, hit the bell so you get reminded of other episodes coming out. And as always, this is Scott, and I will see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, Share and subscribe.